Hey, I think we're live. It it looks like we're live. Hey, everyone. Uh, it's Josh from Mighty Meep, and today I'm going to play a little Magic 2015 Duels of the Planeswalkers, uh, which is the latest in the annual Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalker franchise from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, so let's go ahead and boot this up, and I'll talk a little bit about it. So, uh, I don't know, I could have done a little research on this, I guess, but, uh, I don't remember when the first Duels of the Planeswalkers came out, but it was a while ago. I remember it coming out, like, on the Xbox 360 and, and those consoles, but, uh, I didn't really play it much. Um, it, from what I understood, the original releases were pretty limited. They didn't let you build your own decks. You unlock cards as you played through, like, a series of campaign missions or story missions or whatever, and over time you would unlock additional cards and then those would go into your decks and then you would have kind of pre-made decks on certain colors and you would pick those uh, and then you would play those and then there was some multiplayer and I think maybe it's even some of the later ones but um, from what I understand there's been n at no point in this franchise up until now anyway uh, no ability to actually deck build or do you know the thing that people really enjoy playing magic for uh, which is building your own custom decks but now, Magic 2015, because we live in the future, uh, you can totally make your own deck now. Really exciting. So uh, we're going to play a little bit. I just finished the tutorial, or most of the tutorials, one the very last one. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of walk, uh, do that one, uh, and then maybe mess around a little bit um, beyond that, and then we'll kind of see what happens. Uh, so there's there's Garuk. Garuk kind of standing there all badass or something. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, he's got a really, really big axe. Um... Oh, my mustache itches. Anyway, um, so Garuk is a planeswalker, and I am also a planeswalker, if if I recall correctly. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, actual story at the start of each tutorial thing, or each campaign mission or whatever in this game. So it actually does fill you in on some of the magic lore, which I, I know there's some, but I, does anybody actually follow magic lore? Like, I, I don't know. I've... I know a lot of people that play Magic, and I don't know anyone that follows Magic lore. Like, who does? Like, who, who reads that? I don't know. But it's here, and it talks about it a little bit, and it's... Oh, my camera's getting crazy. Oh, there we go. Uh, so, yeah. So, I'm in the main menu here. You can see that right up the gate, you've got options for single player, multiplayer. There's your shop, because, you know, they want you to buy stuff. <laughs> Weird, right? Uh, you got your deck, so... You, uh, like I was saying earlier, new to Magic 2015 is the ability to actually make your own decks and customize them in the way that you want. So uh, they have that option here. You can look at your card collection because, you know, when you spend a bunch of money on cards, you, you want to look at them. Uh, help and options. I need help and options. Player profile. That's my picture that I chose. There was like 30 pictures and I picked that one. My camera is really having a hard time keeping me in focus for some reason. I apologize. I don't think it helps with my uh, blinds behind me, but uh, uh, so yeah, I chose this masked guy. I have no idea who he is, but he looked kind of cool, I guess. Um, store locator. If you want to play magic in a store like a normal person, uh, you can look it for stores there. And then extras, which I haven't really looked at. Let's look at the extras. What's extra? Multiverse, leaderboards, promotions. I have no idea what any of these are. I guess it's just pictures. The planes gallery. Ah, okay. So this, I'm my magic, not my magic. Ex, sorry, my magic experience and magic knowledge is pretty limited. Uh, I played for about a year and a half, roughly, um, back when M2010 came out, uh, during that time. So some of these, like these, I'm not really familiar with, like. Uh, Ravnica, I know, is one of the newer ones from my time at a game, you know. I spend my time at a, a lot of time at a game store, so I'm kind of familiar with that. Same with Theros, I know, is one of the newest ones. Uh, Innistrad was a kind of n older one from, like, a couple of years ago. Um, Chandelar, I have no fucking clue what Chandelar is. <laughs> it's a bunch of water. There, it's a water plane. Sure. Uh, and then Zendikar is right about the time that I left. I actually remember that set. Um, so Zendikar block is what they called it. Um, I Around the time that I, I got out of Magic. Because I, I could not afford my 
my card addiction. It's crazy that people can. So, let's look at some Zendikar. Zendikar, this land of rare primal mana, is precarious, unpredictable, and lethal. Its raw power makes Zendikar a dynamic world, ever-changing and crackling with intense magical effects. Massive geological transformations, fluctuations in gravity, and the spontaneous growth of life reflect volatility known as the Royal. Royal. Enormous stone hedrons float unsettling in the air, brimming with arcane knowledge. It has long been long. Okay, I'm done. I don't want to read any more of this. Uh, so here's some pictures. Again, it's, if you're really into magic lore, then the art is, art is really pretty. That's one thing that I've always liked about magic, is that for the most part, Art on, art on the cards is fucking good. Like, it's really nice. Uh, so, anyway, and then you can look at Planeswalkers, which I, I could not care less about Planeswalkers. Uh, all I know is that when I was playing, everyone was all like, Jace! Jace is the best! And I was like, I don't well, I don't know. And then one of my friends bought a Jace, and then I didn't like playing with him anymore. And I said, fuck you, I'm not playing Magic with you anymore. What is this crap? Um... Alright, so let's get out of here. I'm going to go to the single player. So as you can see here, uh, I started the tutorial. Even though I'm... So I'm familiar with the game still. Even though it's been like three-ish years, three or four years since I've really played. Um, I still remember, you know, the rules for the most part. But I did. I went through the tutorial just to see how, I guess, friendly it was for people who have never played before. Um, and it's pretty good. It's... It definitely teaches you the very basic fundamentals of Magic, um, which it's, it's not a really complicated game. It's pretty simple, really. It's just that once you start getting into some of the more complex cards is what kind of makes the game more, I guess, frustrating. And, you know, you really have to think about what you're doing. Um, it's not really the mechanic. It's more of the cards, I guess, is more accurate from my own point of view. I don't, I don't really know. I have a very limited point of view on this. Um, but yeah, so each each tutorial um, lets you play the different color of deck. So on Magic, there's five different colors. You've got red, green, black, blue, and white. So each each one, uh, it's a little deceiving. The first quest, you don't actually play as the red deck. You actually fight against the red deck. So it's kind of showing you your opponent. Uh, but they give you... They give you one of each color in each of the tutorials as a way of kind of demonstrating some of those colors' main strengths uh, while teaching you the mechanics of the game, which is kind of cool. So, for example, like the white tutorial has a lot of a um, lot of equipment. So you're you're teaching you the basics of like how equipment works and how that attaches to creatures and blah 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 blah. So, uh, and then there's like the fourth tutorial is all about like, hey, here's like sorcery stuff. And here's how to cancel, you know, when someone summons a big old monster, you can play a cancel spell that just totally gets rid of it. Um, makes it as if it never happened. So it's that, that kind of stuff. You know, it's just very basic. If you've played Magic, you don't need to do the tutorial. Like, it's not necessary. But it's a good refresher course. And uh, for me, it was really nice. Uh, so I'm on the final one, Prove Your Worth. Uh, and at this point, once you get to the final one, it actually asks you to choose, a, choose two colors, essentially. You're, you're starting your first deck essentially your first custom deck so you can change it at any time i had chosen uh so here you got your different colors and they kind of tell you a little bit the red magic embodies fire and lightning passion and fury blah 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 blah, blah. um i went with blue as my blue as my primary i really liked blue from what i remembered um and then once you choose a color it asks you to choose a starting deck so kind of a variation off of a couple of different options i guess off of that primary color so for example I've got blue and black, so but they call it Cruel Denial. It's got to have a cool name. It's called it Cruel Denial. Uh, you've got Echoing Roar, which is blue and green. You've got Blazing Intellect, which is blue and red. And then Freezing Winds, which is blue and white, I think. Yeah, blue and white. So it gives you a lot of options. Um, it, it, pretty much every color combination is represented. So you choose your primary color, and then you have the option of any secondary color. And it gives you a bunch of cards based on that. So you don't really get to choose at the beginning. Uh, but I'm going with blue and black because, again, those are cards that I really remember uh, from back in the day when I played. So, yes, Cool Denial will be my starting deck. And let's go ahead and do this tutorial. So let's see what happens here. Oh, boy. 
This guy is trying to step on me. It's kind of an asshole. Uh, so they, and they, so these single-player missions kind of have a story. Like this one says, a horde of monsters are threatening to overrun a village. So each one, from what uh, I haven't really dug into the uh, other than the tutorial, so I don't know what's beyond. Uh, I know from what I've read, some of the other websites and stuff that have been talking about the game already. Um, I guess a lot of the, the single-player missions are like this, where they has a very loose story uh, with some objectives that you're trying to do. But for the most part, you're generally just trying to kill the other your opponent. I mean, that's kind of what magic is and what you're doing. Uh, so let's continue. So the game is really pretty. I, but it's one of the, the key things to note is that the game is gorgeous. Um, I really like like the art on the cards and stuff really is notable and easy to f the to read. Oh my god, my camera is really driving me crazy. How about if I do this? A little Spider-Man action in there. That's a little better. All right. So yeah, so far it's so good. Let me let me see. Hello, camera. Having having troubles there? All right. No, you're good. So um, yeah, the the art's gorgeous. The game looks beautiful. Um, but there's a couple of problems which I'll show you here in a second that are kind of frustrating, especially when you've played a lot of Hearthstone. Um, you realize that this game is not. It's different. It's not meant to be the same, but it's it's different enough that's kind of frustrating in some ways. So uh, I get to choose my starting hand. Do I like this hand? I've got some. I've got a couple land, but for the most part, it's not very good. So I'm going to draw a new hand. Um, that's a little better. That gives me some gives me some options there. So we'll keep that hand. All right. So I'm f I'm first. First thing you do in Magic is play land if you've got them. So I've got a bunch of black cards black cards in my starting hand. So I'm going to play some swamps to get things going. Uh, so you see, there's a little timer there. It's filling up. So each step, you have these different phases of magic of a, a player's turn. And during that little timer that's kind of filling up, so you can see when he plays this card, watch the top right corner. Oh, actually, hold on. Uh, he's doing something to me. Just kidding. Um, Spire Tracer can't be blocked except for by creatures with flying or reach. Okay. So he summoned that. And then you'll see in the top right corner at the end of his turn, that little meter fills up. So during that time... I can press the stop timer on the left-hand side. There's that button under continue. If I press that, that'll stop that timer, and that gives me time to counteract whatever he's doing. So uh, before his turn's over, I can do something. I can play a card that you know that is legal during that phase or whatever. And that generally works for all the phases. So during combat, if he plays a spell, um, that timer will fill up, and it's pretty quick, so you don't have a lot of time. You kind of have to act fast if you have something that you want to counter with. Um, but then on the other hand, that is kind of the point. It's one of the points of this game that is kind of frustrating compared to Hearthstone because Hearthstone moves very fast. Like, you play a card and boom, 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 things are happening. Things are animating really quickly. In this, like, you play a card, there's no animations to the cards, and then they're waiting for these timers to fill up for them to, you know, they have to have their reaction window. But it's still, it just kind of drags turns. It makes them a little slow. The game's not as snappy as Hearthstone is, which is kind of frustrating. It's not as just quick and, you know, boom, 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 playing a game, I'm done. I lost already because I suck. Bam. Like, this is a little more, I don't know, methodical, slower paced. Um, so I'm going to play some land, and then I'm going to play a creature. So it automatically taps your land for you. You know, magic, you got to tap that land. Gotta tap it. And by turning it sideways, but it does it for you. Um, so it has some little tool tips that come up here. So summoning sickness, so just reminding you me that I can't attack this turn because my creature has summoning sickness, which uh, you can tell on the card. You can see that there's that little purple swirl on my card. That just means that I can't use him to attack this turn. Uh, I can defend, but not attack. Um, so he played a Timberland Guide. Okay. So I'm probably going to lose because I'm really not paying too much attention. I'm mostly just kind of talking and all that. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, so he's, he's engaging in combat with me. So he's declared an attacker, and he's going directly for me. Oh, see? And because I didn't move to block it, it's just boom, I got hit. Like, you have to act quickly during those timer windows, which is kind of crappy. I mean... So when I play, like, I get distracted really easily, especially when I'm playing on the iPad like I am right now. 
uh, I it's very easy for me to kind of look up at something else or you know not pay attention completely to the game, which is I guess is my fault. But uh, and then all of a sudden I get hit or something happens and it's just a little I don't know it's a little frustrating. Um, so on one hand the timer kind of slows the game down. On the other hand, it's kind of frustrating that oh I I wasn't paying attention and I missed my window. But again you can hit that stop timer if you're if you catch it in time hit that stop timer button and then you have as much time as you need to do whatever um so i don't have any more lands this is kind of bad um i'm gonna play another child of night uh let's see if he does anything to respond no so combat combat phase starts so that red line so when the board or when the table splits like that and you see that red line um that means that the combat phase has started so Either me or my opponent is initiating an attack against the other player. So the purple card highlights who is available to attack. Um, so let's see, he's only got one creature that he can defend with. And if I tap it twice, I can look at his card in detail. Um, so he's at a 1-1. One, one. Uh, so I hit for 2-1. And I've got lifelink. Which, I don't remember what lifelink does. So if you get more info on, on a card, if you're not familiar with the keyword, it, it tells you, which is pretty nice. Um, damage dealt by something with lifelink also causes controller to gain that much life. Okay. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't really need all that detail. Um, so I've got that other one that I can block with if needed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attack. Uh, and then once you pick an attacker, you hit the attack button on the left. And then he's that's my phase. And now his meter he gets a chance to block which he is and then boom we kill each other I healed though from that which is nice and then my turn is over so that's pretty much how a, a, a turn goes uh, so he's attacking oh I want to stop the timer so I'm going to oh come on I thought I I I thought I, that's one of the first things about recording on the iPad is that I always set it to do not disturb. You know, I'm not supposed to get notifications, but for some reason I still do. That's uh, really annoying. If anybody has a way to fix that, please tell me because it's super obnoxious. Um, okay, so it's one of the things that's a little frustrating is that, so okay, I guess I can't block with him. I don't know. So that was really, that was really confusing because... I should have been able to block with that creature, but yet I couldn't, uh, and it wouldn't let me, and it won't tell me why either. So it's a little... The game is, it doesn't always just explicitly tell you what you need to know, which can be really frustrating with a game like Magic where so many cards have different effects and whatnot, and you're trying to trigger one, and it's just nothing's happening, and so you kind of have to just tap on everything on the screen until something, you know, will maybe show up and explain why you can't do that. Um kind of sucks it's really annoying um there was one where one of the creatures that i had uh if you're familiar with magic it's the um the pyromancer it's like one of the little lowly red creatures uh, that you tap him and then he shoots a f one damage fireball at anyone you want and i couldn't figure out a way to actually activate him in the game like it says tap him do it so it's like okay i'm tap on the creature i'm trying to like spin it with my fingers nothing's working you actually have to like double tap on a card bring it up like this, and then there's a little button under more info that says activate ability, which isn't really intuitive. It is kind of, there's, there's no indication that that's what I'm supposed to do, and the tutorial never explained that very well. So again, there's just some weird UI stuff that's really kind of frustrating. Um, still a really good game, but yeah, it's just just not perfect. Um, so I don't really have much that I can do, unfortunately. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play that uh, to banish that creature back to his hand, uh, and that gives me a window to a, a window to attack here, which I will take it. Uh, and then, boom! That hits him. Hooray! I get healed for two. So I got life link, bitches! And that's my turn. So it's back to him. Uh, I could really use some more land. This is not very, not very good, uh, especially when he's playing a creature like that. See, a lot of these key terms, uh, hexproof. I don't, I don't really know. Like that's kind of something I'm not entirely familiar with. 
Uh, something with hex roots can't be chosen as the target of spells or abilities that's controller's opponent's control. Controller's opponent's control. Okay, I, I get it, but... Um, so, any, so I can't target it with something that says targeted creature. Okay, makes sense. Alright. So that's the end of his turn. Yay, some more land. Finally. So that'll let me play some more cards, thankfully. I've got a couple options now. Um, so on the right-hand side, so a couple of things here to show you. If you look at the opponent at the top right of the screen, um, the the one, you know, I actually don't know what that one is. I'm not entirely certain. Let's see if it tells me. See, Yeah, when I tap on it, it doesn't say anything. I've got a two on my side. I have no idea. Uh, the five, though, represents your... Um, oh, you know, it must be your discard. Oh, it's your graveyard. I think that's what it is. So that's cards in your graveyard. Uh, the five on his screen, the five on my end corner, is the number of cards in your hand. Um, and then the, the larger number, the 49 that we both have, is the number of cards remaining in our deck. So you can actually count, and you can actually tell how many cards that we each have. So certain cards... Some magic terms, like if they say mill, milling your deck is a common like magic strategy of, you know, you're just making your opponent have to burn cards from his library, which is his stack of cards. Yeah, so many, so many terms. Anyway, so that's all that information is there visible so you can see it. Um, I'm going to play, play Mind Rot and make him discard some cards. All right. So yeah, you discard a couple of cards. Um, and then I sh Well, see, here's the problem. So I don't necessarily want to attack. Because if I do, then my creature's going to be tapped, and then I'm wide open to get hit by that 3-3 creature. So I'm actually just going to skip my attack phase. And so this is one of the more interesting, interesting things about magic, and it's a little more strategic in that way with attacking and stuff than Hearthstone. Whereas Hearthstone, you just attack. Um... Oh, so see, I had, to th I had to act real fast to get a blocking in there. So, so I'm going to block. Um, oh, get out of there. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to hit block. I'm going to lose this fight, but at least I'm not going to take any damage. Um, see, like Hearthstone, creatures attack, and then, you know, there's they're not tapped or, you know, exhausted or anything like that. Um, in this game, you have to be really careful about leaving yourself exposed. So, like, in his case, if he didn't have a new creature to play, his one beast would be tapped, and then he's wide open to get pummeled. Uh, so, and that's why I didn't attack my previous turn, because now my my uh, creature... Excuse me. My creature was untapped, and he was active, uh, and then I was able to block with him. So, I'm, I'm trying to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. I hope it's working. I, I don't know. Um, so, I'm going to play some more Swamp... Because I got swamps. Got swampy ass here, apparently. And let's see. I've got a few different things I can play at this point. Um, I can't play that guy, but I can play any of these other ones. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with Intimidate. Um, let's see what Intimidate does. Can you be blocked only by creatures that share a color with them? Oh, okay. There we go. So... Yeah, that sounds sounds like a good card. So I'm gonna play that. It's gonna take all my mana, but I think that's a good one. Uh, so yes, I don't I don't need to see that tooltip again. I I'm very aware of summoning sickness. All right, so now I'm a little worried because he's got two creatures that he can attack me with. This uh, this is gonna hurt. So I'm gonna block with one of them. I'm gonna lose this guy, but. I don't definitely. I just don't want to get hit for six damage. So that one's gonna hit me. I'm gonna. We're both gonna kill each other. There you go. In a turn. Um. So I don't want to play that because his creature is already tapped. Um. Let's do. do inspiration and I'm gonna choose myself I could choose the other opponent apparently but uh, that seems crazy excellent so I've got some I've got some land um, 
this is not very good though. I don't have a creature. I don't have a creature. That was actually a terrible move. Oh god, I suck at magic. Um, so now I'm totally exposed and he's gonna hit me for three damage. Uh, man. <sighs> oh boy. Alright, let's see what happens. I'm getting some cards now. So get some get some islands out there so I can do stuff. Um So let's get this guy. I used to have this card. I remember that guy back when I used to play. He was always kinda cool. Uh so when he comes into play You may turn target tapped creature. I guess I couldn't do oh I guess hex proof duh. See I'm just forgetting that. Uh, just lots of things to keep track of. Way more keywords than even uh, Hearthstone does. Uh, and at least Hearthstone, they're kind of pretty obvious what they do. Um, so I'm going to get hit again for another four now. This is not going so well, guys. Um, oh, boy. i got to turn this around. Ugh, okay. That, that tooltip is really annoying. Okay, so I want to keep two blue mana available for that. Uh, it's a target creature. I guess if he does an aura spell, but it's not very likely. All right, I gotta get some stuff out there. I'm I'm getting pummeled. I guess I could play the frost links, but I kind of want to save him. Let's see what happens. Oh, I guess it's telling me that, hey, I can play that card, but I'm not going to. Maybe I should. I don't know if that's the game telling me that I should be playing it. Uh, I'm not really certain. Uh, so he's going to attack. I can't. I guess I uh, see. I can block. Okay. I'm going to lose this fight. I'm not going to kill that stupid thing, but I'm not, at least I'm not going to take any more damage. Uh, and again, unlike Hearthstone, uh, creatures actually heal all their damage at the start of their turn, so uh, that's not persistent damage. Hmm. Let's see. I guess I gotta play that. Ah, that's that really stinks because I really wanted to save that, be able to to tap a creature and then get like a freebie opening or whatever, but. I don't think that's going to be the case here. Uh, I kind of don't have any options. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm kind of hosed. I really don't know what to do. Let's see if uh, anyone in the chat is is watching. Yeah, nobody. Nobody offering any suggestions anyway. Uh, God, do I want to just lose my creature? I'm getting crushed here. I feel like I'm just. Throwing things away at this stupid uh, beast that he's got. I can't seem to kill it. I'm not getting big enough creatures to actually stop it. Oh, I don't have enough mana to do that. Oh, that's too bad. That would have been really nice. Oh, that's a good. That's a good card. All right, we'll play that. All right. Oh, that's the end of my turn. I am. I am so screwed. I've got nothing to defend with. I'm just gonna get smashed right here. I've got no creatures. I. It's, I don't really know what else to do. Ah, oh, man. I'd r I keep getting sorceries and in instants. Well, I'll just keep uh, I'll just keep blowing up his stuff. I mean, he won't have any cards either. So now we're both uh, have uh, no cards or no creatures on the field. Let's see how that goes. Oh, he's got his first red. I wonder if he's been sitting on. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, four attack. Ouch. 
Um, I guess I can play... There we go. I was trying to get it to play, and it, it, see, again, it's just not one of those super intuitive things, but um, it worked. Well, yeah, so now I've just got... I've got turns where I don't really get to do anything, so I'll play a card into my turn. And then he plays... All he has to do is play a creature, and then I'm just... I'm hosed. Yeah. Ugh. Whenever another red creature, he gets plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn. Okay. Yeah, and I got nothing I can do about it. I don't know, because the first time I played with this... Uh, black and blue deck um so i just i don't know if it's just not very good maybe it's just i don't know maybe it's just very few creatures in it it's mostly spells or sorceries and instants i don't know so far that seems to be the case now he's got three creatures on the field and i've got none all right well i got one now So the saying that abilities can be activated, you zoom in and you can activate the card, which makes sense. So I can sacrifice him. Um, yes, don't show me that again. Uh, I can't. I can't do that because I don't have a creature to sacrifice. All right. So... I guess it really wants me to do... So let's see what happens if I activate. Yeah, see, I can't do one of them, so I can't even use the can't even use that ability on that creature. So um, <laughs> this game is really just an agonizing. Uh, yeah, see, I'm I'm gonna lose. I think right here. Oh, I figured he was gonna do that to me. All right, so he's gonna hit me three three so you can kind of see like what I meant about the speed of the game like it's just kind of waiting for each card to resolve individually but there's no animations that go along with it so it just kind of feels I mean it, it's not very exciting like this the the gameplay itself is just very it looks nice but it's very sterile like it's it just lacks a lot of the the energy that something like Hearthstone does. And I hate to keep comparing it to that, because they're very different games, but it's, I don't know, like Blizzard did such a great job with the presentation of that uh, and just making games feel very quick and fast-paced and exciting. But I just, I feel like this game just really drags a lot. All right, so I've got a new creature. Pretty beefy creature too. Um, I'm not going to sacrifice any of my life uh, for that, so. Considering, so flying makes it so they can't block me, but they can still attack, so it doesn't really do me any good. So we're waiting on him. So he's going to attack. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna, definitely going to block. So I'll block that creature, I guess, to at least kill him. Oh, wow. What a dick. Ugh. <laughs> no. So, oh, oh, he's not doing it. To, he, I figured he was going to do it to uh, the other goblin that I'm blocking against. But he's still going to hit me really hard. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well. Crap. I got to do something here. Uh, well, I can't use that ability now because I don't have two life to, to burn. So, let's do combat. Let's, uh, uh, see if, uh I'm going to lose regardless. He's going to attack me twice. and Yeah. So, th I've lost. Like, at this point, normally I, I would not want to attack because I'm going to leave myself exposed. But... I, there's no reason I'm going to... The best situation is that he is going to... Um, if I blocked him on his turn, if I left my, my vampire untapped, uh, I could block one of his creatures, um, and then I would be down to one health, and then the next turn he would finish me off. So it's just, to me, I'd rather just get the game over with. 
It's just kind of it's an agonizing game here. There we go. I lost. Yay. Oh, so sad. So sad. So let's be, let's be Battlefield. Oh, okay, so you can kind of see the, the table, I guess, at the end of the game. That's cool, I guess. Let's look at some other stuff. I really don't want to do that again. Let me get some drinks for coffee. All right. So let's exit back out. Um, let's look at. I I don't want to do multiplayer. I'm just I. I'll be honest. I already know what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna lose. Uh, instead of the can the tutorial, let's do. Well, why won't it let me for a second there? Well, so okay, so that's weird. I just had the option uh, in single player to do campaign. Uh, now I don't because I exited too far. And I, 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 see, that's really weird. Just some weird UI stuff. Like it's just not a very, it's very beautiful, but just not polished in certain ways. I guess it's just really frustrating. Um, all right. Well, I guess we're gonna. Uh, you know what? Let's look at the shop. Let's see what this is like. I haven't really dug into any of this. Uh, so you can buy bundles. All launch content except boosters, and this has been some controversy. I've read a little bit about that. Um, basically, the base game with all of the planes, all the modes and stuff, uh, all unlocked, plus 300 foil stickers? I don't really know what stickers are. Um, boosters that you, you pretty much get when you play certain sections of the game, so you don't get those. Um, so for 35 bucks, though, you essentially unlock all the single-player content. All the cards that you would get from beating missions and beating the parts of the campaign, uh, you will get that if you just spend the 35 bucks. So if you don't really want to bother um, doing all that stuff, if you just want to play, have access to all the the cards, and then jump into like multiplayer or whatever, uh, you can just spend 35 bucks and then you're done. You don't have to do anything else. So they they give you the option. The app is free. I, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but so the game is free to play, and then everything else is optional. Um, there's no in-game currency like Hearthstone, so don't expect to be able to play and just, uh, you know, get stuff for free over time if you grind it out. Like, that's not going to happen here. Uh, if you want, like, boosters and stuff, you got to spend actual money for it. Um, so you can buy chapters. So 10 bucks unlocks all campaign chapters if you just don't want to mess with any of that. Um, so this one's got the Theros plane, so I guess they've already got additional planes uh, available so I, I don't know I'm not really sh not really sure what that's about um, it says that there's three new campaign battles one new boss battle unlocks multiplayer mode so I guess I guess I can't even play multiplayer that's really confusing like I see multiplayer on the main menu but can I not play it I don't know um, let's see boosters they don't tell you how much boosters are hmm let's see oh Da -da 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 -da. Oh, yeah. That's something to get you. You spend all your money there. No, thank you. I'm not going to be spending any money. At least not today. Shh, don't tell me. Uh, I guess you can buy entire collections of cards. So, 20 bucks unlock all the cards in the game. I, I guess it's cool. Um, you can spend 5 bucks to unlock all the cards from each set. So, Innistrad, Theros, etc. So, again... It's just a way that if you want, so buying a thirty-five dollar bundle gets you all this anyway. But if you, if you want to go through the the campaign, but you just want all the cards straight out the gate uh, to play multiplayer with, you can just spend the money. So at least they give you options of progression. So if you want to just spend money in certain ways without having to just buy everything at once, you know, if they're gonna do in-app purchases like that for a free-to-play game. That's honestly the way I would prefer it to be done. Like everything's kind of modulated out, so you can pick and choose what you want to buy if you want it. So I mean, I have to kind of give them give them kudos for that. Like I think that's a smart way of handling it. Um, I'm not gonna even click on foils because it's new things. Let's see what kind of decks. Uh, oh, I have to complete the tutorial first. All right.
You must have a valid deck. Would you like to enter the tutorial? Ah, uh, yeah. So you can't even play multiplayer yet. So they kind of lock you out. If you choose tutorial, you can actually just say skip tutorial when you launch the game for the first time. So if you do that, then you don't. You're not locked out. But it's kind of weird that they lock you out of that. If you once you accept the tutorial, you don't really have a choice but to finish the tutorial until you know you can do anything else. Um, I really want to get back into the other stuff, and it real it will not let me. Uh, so I'm going to play it one more time, and I'm going to choose a different deck color just to kind of show. I want to see what some of the different pre-made decks are like and the different colors. So I chose blue and black last time. Let's do... Let's do... I like green a lot. That was always one of my favorites as well. I, I used to have a deck that I remember playing. It was mono green was kind of the thing that I really enjoyed. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but... It was just, just all green. There was no other color whatsoever. So that was kind of fun. Uh, so I'll do green. And then I have to pick a second color to go with it. So natural order is black. Need the call is white. Smash and burn is red. And green war is blue. Do smash and burn. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Let's jump into this and let's uh, let's try to blaze through this pretty quickly here. Let's see if we can knock this guy out. There we go. All right. I got your number, Polis Crusher. Uh, it's a good selection of uh, decent starting land. Uh, this thing's only cost one green. So I feel pretty good about that. And we'll keep. I think that's pretty nice. I don't know if it's actually nice, but it, it feels nice. All right, so we'll, we'll start off with that. We'll, we'll see how this works. We'll see if results of this match are much better than last time. Uh, I have confidence that I'm gonna win. I wonder if he's playing the exact same deck. Because he was doing a red... Yeah, okay. So I didn't know if maybe based on your your starting deck um, that you chose, if that actually affects your enemies and what color deck they have. Doesn't seem to be the case. It's still red and probably green, if that's what it was last night. So I think we're going to have identical decks that we're playing against each other, or identical in terms of color. Um, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Kiln, uh, Kiln Fiend gets plus three. Okay, that's pretty good. I've got no instant or sorceries right now. So maybe I'll hold off on him. We'll, we'll just, uh, we'll do these for now. All right. I'm going to attack. I'm sure he's going, oh, he can't block. Unless this creature has got flying or reach. Aha, I got you, first blood. I am going to win. Probably not. So he's attacking me. I will block. You know what? No. I can't figure out how to... I declared... I'm putting him there. Can I not withdraw? I don't see, I don't have the option to like withdraw him. So that really sucks. Like I, I'd like to pull him back. I changed my mind. I don't want to block. Let me unblock. Nope. All right. I guess I'm committed. So that's really unfortunate. Like you, you kind of want to take it back and you can't. So even though nothing has resolved yet and just says, nope, normally I will let you. I, I've seen the option to withdraw, but maybe that's only when you're attacking. Maybe if you're blocking and if you put something down, like you can't take it back. Maybe that's an official rule. Like maybe I don't know. I, I could be like that's how magic is supposed to be played. I I just don't know. Yeah, we got a sorcery spell. All right, we'll throw this guy out there. All right, I've got you. It is too hot to be drinking coffee. I don't know why I'm doing that. 
That's a horrible decision. But I make lots of bad choices. That's just that's just par for the course. For some reason, I can't play that sorcery yet. On the game of control, in case your fights. Oh, interesting. All right. So I feel I feel safe attacking with both because he has no creatures out. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, oh, he's gonna play a spell. Okay. That's too bad. But be so because anything that he plays will likely be have summoning sickness on his turn. So unless he plays a creature with haste, it's pretty unlikely. But he could. So he's just not going. Okay. Um. So the only card I can play is the primordial primordial hunt beast, which is pretty good. I gotta say. All right. We'll we'll play him. Can't be targeted, which is pretty nice. Okay, so yes, we will attack. So far, I am just whittling him down, and that's typically how a game of magic, I feel like, goes. Um, it's rare that you're just doing boom, boom, big, massive damage, you know, kind of in one go. Uh, I found in my experiences, at least when I used to play, uh, it was typically some back and forth of like, here's one damage, here's two, and then oh, I healed it, and then you just kind of go back and forth until. Somebody just happens to have, like, the perfect storm of monsters on the field where you just, I swing for 15 damage. You're like, what, what, how did that happen? Uh, and then you lose. So. Um, all right. What does this guy do? When pitch, burn devil dies, deals three damage to target creature or player. That's pretty good. So I can play that. Or I can play, or I can play that. I can't play that yet. So I don't, I don't really understand this one too much. When this card is cast, it has its effect, and then it's put in its own... I get that. I, I, <laughs> I get it. Uh, and so put one, plus one, plus one on target creature you control, and that creature fights target creature you don't control. Okay. I don't really want that with any of my creatures, because he's going to hit me really hard. Um, so we'll do, we'll do that. We'll play this guy. And he's 3-3, three, three. and what's this thing? Yeah, so that'll be good. So I'm going to... Mm, he's going to he's gonna block, probably. I'll attack with both, and that'll give me the one to defend with on my turn. Yeah, I figured he was going to block that guy. At least I'll kill him. And then he tramples and does two damage to me. Oh, no, it's only when he attacks. Okay. So trample means excess damage will go to the player, but I couldn't remember if that was on defending as well. So his turn's done. He still has nothing. So I still have my creature. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. He killed that other one. Darn it. Uh, Krenko's command put to... Oh, cool. Yeah, sure. We'll play that. That sounds good. All right, so we got some little creatures here. And let's attack. So now I'm doing a little bit more damage here. I think I've... This fight's going pretty well so far. Um, am I having a hard time seeing myself really losing this one? Some, unless something really bad <laughs> happens in the next turn or two. Uh, I think I've got this one in the bag. He's still not playing anything, which... I don't know. Makes me really nervous. I, I, he must have some really expensive cards in his hand. I just I'm having a hard time understanding why he's not playing. It's kind of weird. Okay. So we'll, we'll play him. And then who do I want to get a plus one plus one? We'll throw it on that one since he can't be blocked. That's pretty nice. And just gonna attack with all attack and this is gonna hurt sorry polis crusher but uh you're going down all 
All right. So he basically has to do something on this turn, or I, I've got it one. Let's see what he does. He's got eight mana. He's still... Okay, well... All right. That's the end of the game. I will attack him with shock. And then... All right. So we'll, we'll attack with everyone. Just because I'm an asshole. And that'll do it. And... <laughs> The best part is that it still goes through and does all the attacks even though he's dead. I guess it could matter. I, I don't know circumstances where it would. Typically, from what I understand, this, the game would just end normally, so there's no chance of him coming back or you know playing something that would cancel that, I suppose. But uh, So there you go. I beat him. That was much easier with that deck. Uh, so I win. Woohoo! Let's see what happens. Achievement unlocked. <gasps> I got a booster pack. Ooh. Title unlocked. All right, let's see what I got. Nice little animation there. I just get one card. Is that it? That's pretty nice, though. My, there we go. Phytotian, Phyto Titan, Phyto Titan, Phyto Titan, Phyto Titan. I went Phyto Titan dies. Return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the next turn. That's pretty good. Seven attack, whoa! Seven power, that's pretty awesome. So it's a rare, so on the right hand side, the D15, so the D stands for duels. Normally it would say M, uh, if this was a real, like, paper magic card. Uh, it would say M15 or something to note what set it's from. D15 is just saying this is from duels 2015. Uh, and, the, and the color of that little square where it says D15 uh, denotes the rarity, so. If it's black, it's common. If it's silver, it's uncommon. Gold is rare. And then if it's like a reddish color, it's mythic rare, which is the rarest you can get. Very cool. So let's see what unlocks now. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to wrap this up here. But let's just kind of see what else we've got here. I've got a dog right under my feet. He's kind of coming to say hi. And now he's leaving. All right. Welcome to the oh here we go. Welcome to the deck builder. On the screen, you will create and shape the decks you will use in duels. Paying the names of cards you currently have in your collection. <laughs> I've got one card in my collection. Hooray! And then you have in your deck. Oh, okay. And it has a good balance of lands. You're on the deck. Twenty six lands and thirty spells, which is ideal. Here's your first card. It's a rare card, which means it's very special. You can add this card to your deck to use it in duels. Adding cards to your deck can improve it. Drag on the card to move it to your deck. Don't forget, you can zoom in on it to get more information. Yes. So try adding Phyto Titan to your deck now. Ta-da! Well done. Uh, mission accomplished. Uh, I should take one spell out. Remove Krinko's command. New card is even better. Okay. Sure, game. I will do exactly what you tell me to do. And you can save your changes. Okay. Let me ask if you want to save and quit. Do this now to continue your journey. Done. Save and quit. Nice work. As you unlock more cards. Yes. All right. Little little animation there. The Anaki created the chain veil, not merely to destroy, but to create destroyers. Mm. Of course, most are too weak to survive his curse. Gruesome. Again, the magic lore I know nothing about. But there are always more who were lured by its promise of power. I think she's a planeswalker. I think I don't. I don't know. Some have been twisted and ruined. It's dark magic. But Garrick, if his curse is not removed, he will be a threat to us all. Huh. Okay. Um so now okay, so now here's the actual campaign proper. So I can't go to the other ones. 
I have to do them in order. So you start off with Innistrad. Vampire Soren Markov is invited to his home plane of Innistrad to investigate the murders of several planeswalkers. Could Garuk be behind this? I don't know, considering you just said that Garuk has to be taken down. It seems a pretty logical guess. Um, so yeah, so there's di these different planeswalkers, and I guess this game revolves around them. Considering it's called Duels of the Planeswalkers, it makes sense. Uh, Soren Markov is one, if I remember right. Um, I don't know if that was Liliana in the trailer there. I think it's Liliana of the Veil is her name. It could have been her. Like, I honestly don't know. Uh, it shows how little I know. Um, I know Grook is one of the green planeswalkers. Uh, and part of the green mana. I, I don't know. That's about, I, am, I am trying to tell as much information as I genuinely know here. Um, so I guess they're trying to tell a loose story around the different planeswalkers and stuff. But uh, anyway, so there you go. I've got that unlocked. Here we go. Campaign. I can do a practice duel. Uh, so yeah, nice. Okay, so I mean, it's a little meaty. Like you can tell, there's like four or five. I think it was five different chapters. Mm, maybe later. How about you? I don't like when you interrupt me like that. Game. Maybe later. Uh, All right. Uh, so now multiplayer is open. Oh, you must defeat the Innistrad boss before you can play multiplayer. Nope. I guess multiplayer is still locked. So. And oh no. Sorry about that. I accidentally bumped my mic off the table. That was awesome. Uh, so you kind of have to go through some of the campaign before you can even do multiplayer, which kind of sucks. But again, you can just spend money, I guess, if you just want to skip that. I don't know. It's a little crappy. I, I know that that is the main appeal for people is to just play multiplayer. So putting it behind a paywall, eh, it's a little shady. Um, but anyway, so that's Magic 2015, Duels of the Planeswalkers. Uh, I'm going to play around with it some more. I, I like the game. I don't love it, um, but we'll see. We'll see how the campaign goes. It might be pretty interesting. Uh, and the fact that you can deck build is kind of fun. It, it scratches that itch that I've had for Magic. Like I, I did like the game, uh, but not enough to spend that kind of money on it. Uh, so this might be a nice substitute, uh, be able to play a little bit and not really have to spend a single dime on the game. Uh, so we'll see. I'll see how long I stick with it, but it's it's fun. I recommend it, especially if you like magic. It's a no-brainer. Like you're gonna enjoy this game. Uh, if you've always been interested to see what it's like, it's worth checking out, considering it's free. Um, it's just a little slow to get going through the tutorials, and the gameplay itself is just not as fast-paced, especially if you're if you're used to Hearthstone. So anyway, uh, that's gonna do it for me, though. I hope you all have a good weekend, and I will see you all later. And I'm gonna go tap some more mana. Bye.